Good morning and welcome to The Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Um, We are reading from Mark 11 verse 20 to 21. In the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Guys, Jesus also promised in John 14, verse 12 to 14. He said, Verily, verily, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. So, yes, we are constantly asking for good things to happen in our lives. We're constantly praying in our blessings to come in our lives. That is beautiful. We're meant to do that. But we also need to remember to weed out. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. When you guard your heart, you're obviously not going to guard your heart against good things, are you? You're not guarding yourself to say, oh, I I don't want any... Let me see what prosperity comes in here. Or I have to be careful which prosperity comes in here. I have to be careful which beauty comes into my life i have to be careful which um which success comes oh no you're not guarding against good things you're not watching to say oh no i don't want too much prosperity to come into my life no you're not doing that you guard to make sure only good things come into your life whatever way shape or form they come in you're guarding for you're you're guarding to make sure to, to 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 you're guarding against bad things coming into your life you you're trying to make sure only good things come into your life right that that's that's what you do when you're on guard you only want permitted good things to come into your life not not bad things sorry to labor this point so much but we, we have to this is how we have to think when you when you think of the things of god right anyway so um in we, we started this study yesterday on you know cursing and weeding out dysfunction out of our lives so in this case, um, J- Jesus was walking down the road and he, and Peter spotted it straight away and said, oh my gosh, look at that. The tree is withered, just like you cursed it. Jesus also said in this other verse that I've read, he also promised that everything he did, we are going to do. That should be your life, guys. You're meant to read the account of Jesus and, and see what he did. Uh, if possible, watch productions and films on the story of Jesus as much as possible. I use all that material. I binge Jesus. And yes, I've stolen this from, there's a there's a current chosen, there's a, the chosen, there's what we call the chosen, which is a production of the, the, the Jesus and his disciples. It's a TV production on Jesus and his disciples. And it's, I, I mean, I, I could talk at length about the chosen and the director and what and what work they're doing and all the different actors and how they express the word of God. They act out the time that Jesus was here. They start from the very beginning when Jesus picked his disciples out one by one and they go into the full detail. Sorry, I didn't mean to promote the chosen. I'm kind of just, it's helped me see vividly um, the, all the different teachings that Jesus made, his interaction with different people, right? But at the bottom line, the bottom line is Jesus said that we would do what he did. He promised us that we, all these little things that Jesus promised, we, we need to be praying them into our lives. You need to be, that's how you're at minimum, you're meant to function the way Jesus functioned. But he said, you'd even do more than what he did. So at the minimum, at the minimum, you should be doing what he did in his time here at the minimum, right? And then uh, beyond that, you should be doing more than he did. That's what he said. So we need to hold him up to that word. That's how we're meant to function on this earth. Anyway, after he cursed that tree, sure enough, it was withered. You need to be cursing parts of your life that that you don't like. You need to be cursing that laziness out of your life. You need to be cursing that spirit of non-progress, just stagnancy. You just don't seem to be going on in no way, anywhere. You don't seem to be producing any fruit. You see, you go to work, you try to work, you can't really think, process your mind clearly. You need to be cursing all those spirits out. Those are the things you need to be watching out for. It's not so much people. A lot of us think we are, you know, guarding our hearts with all diligence by sort of watching out for different people in our lives. Oh, I'm not sure what that person, why that person's in my life. I don't trust them. You can't really, 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 people aren't your problem, guys. It's the spirit behind the people that is your problem. And that's the spirit you need to be fighting. And like a good teacher pointed out, 
this the way these evil spirits work even if you say oh no this this person is jealous of me i don't want them in my life you can you can do away with that person that spirit of jealousy will will move will will, will manifest through a different person they might manifest through someone you actually really love they might they could even the spirit of say jealousy could manifest through your own husband your own beloved husband your own beloved wife <clears throat> These spirits, once they pursue you, they can manifest in any way, shape or form using different people. You could even change your job. <clears throat> I remember going through a really difficult time in, in at, at work 10 years ago. I mean, the spirit of rejection was so heavy upon me. I could be rejected even if I was trying to, be, to give people money. I was so rejected. It was beyond words, right? And... Um, I remember making up my mind at the time. I had no idea what I was going through. I didn't understand what I was going through. Now I do. Um, but at the time I didn't, I, you know, basically the, you know, generational curses started to manifest in my family through, you know, different members of our family. And yes, I experienced a, a ridiculous rejection. I thank God. I, I worship God every day for giving me the strength to be stubborn enough to stay in this career, which is teaching. I love teaching. Uh, I'm a maths uh, teaching professional by, you know, by profession, but I just love teaching generally and explaining concepts to people. I love it. I love it so much. And uh, oh, I mean, the, the word of God, I could talk about the word of God no, uh, all day. No problem. Anyway, um, the, basically, the, 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 the devil tried to kick me out of teaching, basically. And I, I just refused. I, I was like, I, I love this. I was born to teach and I refuse to live. I don't care what they say I can't do. I couldn't that I could not teach a lesson lesson on addition and subtraction single numbers one plus five I could plan a lesson on teaching that something so basic and I'd still be told it wasn't good enough that's how bad it was guys I enjoyed this at a particular school for it was I left in my sixth year so I stuck at it and I refused and because my my idea was even if I go to another school, I'm still going to endure this. Let me, I'm just going to stick it out and see where God takes me with it. And just, I'm, I'm staying. I, I, I mean, I suffered for so long and I, oh my word, honestly, when I think of it now, I, oh, I'm just, I'm so excited that God kept me and kept me going. Um, how I wasn't actually, you know, formally dismissed of teaching because they found every excuse they, they, they did everything they could to kick me out. I, I wasn't. Okay. So it, clearly it was God's hand that just said, uh, I mean, I'll give a testament about this because certain people even left the profession who wanted me out. They left before me, but they really hungrily, like visibly wanted me out of there. And I, I, I remained, they were taken out. Anyway, the bottom line is guys, um, whatever spirit is manifesting in your life is not about people because you could leave the people, you could leave that job and find it uh, the same. So you could leave teaching in one school and decide to go teach in another school. You could leave teaching altogether and decide to go work somewhere else. It'll still follow you there. It's not about leaving the people or where you are. It's the spirit behind those people. That's what you're up against. All right. Um, so, and, but Jesus is showing us that, you know, uh, curse that spirit curse that spirit of rejection out of your life make it a project curse it let that rejection reject that rejection in the same way that people are rejecting you reject that spirit of rejection in fact let that be the fuel to say how dare you spirit of rejection how dare you cause people to treat me in in a, in a manner so painful and so horrible i i do the same to you i reject you i destroy you with the blood of jesus christ i nullify you i curse you at the root every root you've established in my life i curse it i curse it in the spirit realm i curse it in the physical realm focus on that one spirit guys if you have to find 40 days just on the spirit of rejection go for it do it if you can name every spirit in your life guys you need to be and the minute you start to see that oh my gosh this is this is so clearly the spirit of rejection like i can't hide it at first you're, you're confused because that's how the kingdom of darkness works they confuse you they make you miserable and fearful and confused but you know i pray that god gives you the strength to gain clarity and see it for what it is it's an attack it's a spirit of rejection. It's a spirit of stagnancy. It's a spirit of non-progress. If you can name those spirits, it may not be all of them, but attack them one at a time. Don't, 
I was when I started my prayer and fasting um it, it, it was it's just suddenly dawned on me especially through the pandemic i couldn't ring any man of god to ask for help anymore i was just faced with my life as it was locked up in my little flat flat uh, and i just had to face up to my life on my own i started praying and fasting and listening to messages on youtube and listening to to you know to, to get really good strong teachers to, you know explain to me what is happening in my life at first i tried to, i went on a 21 day fast yes i did and that made such a big difference but guys it may not be the end i have to tell you now then this particular teacher i i, I learned a lot from he went on a 40 day fast and he saw a massive change in his life uh, uh, you can you you can do that it may not it may be that for him that was his deliverance i'm not saying don't go on a 40 day fast but don't when you're looking for deliverance in your life please don't be hung up and thinking that it's all going to happen overnight it, it may not you know so god reveals things to you uh, in his own way the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord depending on your strength depending on your on your circumstances just depending on all the people around you god is so so gracious he'll even look after if you're going to go on a say on a 40 day fast it, it the dynamics of that fast can affect the people around you in my case i have a little I have a little girl, right? Um, and I'm a single mom. And th that can affect how that works. It can affect how you how you treat them. It can affect... So you may find that maybe a 40... Perhaps a 40-day fast is not quite practical. I'm not saying I, I haven't done a 40-day fast or I didn't do a 40-day fast. I'm just saying what works for one person may not work for you. But the point is, let your life be your project spiritually. Let your own life be your project. Go for those spirits, one of them at a time if you have to, all of them at a time if you have to, whichever way. The Holy Spirit will guide you in a way that works for you, in a way that, in such a way as to sort of look after all of you. But the point is, guys, attack those spirits that are attacking your lives. When you go on prayer and fasting, you don't understand what kind of uh, warfare you've just raised against those spirits. Go for them. Go for them hard with the word of God. Uh, through prayer and fasting it may be one day it may be two days whichever way you can but don't do it without the word of god guys attack them with the word of god you're literally cutting them out with a sword you are chopping those snakes you are i need you to imagine you're chopping um you know serpents with, with when you use the word of god against them you are literally slicing them with a sword imagine a snake coming to attack you and you just go ahead and start slicing it with it with a big sword that's what you're doing with the word of god Oh my gosh, I could go on. This could be a whole one hour teaching. Um, I'd like to keep these shares short. Uh, but I'll leave it at this for now, but I'm going to carry on. I enjoy this discussion, this particular uh, theme so much. Like I've got tons to share. Anyway, thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.